Okay, let's go through this problem because this problem is a little bit different than the last problem. This one, instead of using radical, it's to a rational power. However, don't let rational powers and radicals like confuse you guys. If you understand one better than the other, what you can simply do is think about this as the cube root of x plus 1 squared equals 12. Right? Isn't that the same thing? It's the same thing. Now, to answer your question, can you distribute a 3 inside of a radical? No, right? So you can't do it with a rational power because it's the same thing, just a different, um, different way to write it. So what we can do, though, is just like I told you guys before, we need to isolate it, right? So guess what? We need to isolate our expression or variable or term or whatever it may be. We need to, exp we need to um, solve for that raised to the rational power, because that's like the same thing as a radical. So if you see my little green box, you can see my green box is now being multiplied by 3. So to undo multiplication by 3, I will divide by 3. Therefore, I'm left with x plus 1 to the 2 thirds equals 4. Why do what? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it was, it was just, I was just showing you could write it in either form. That wasn't actually the, I was just showing you, hey, you could do it in that form too. I probably should have written it to the side rather than below where my work was. Yes? You could be. I'm going to show you how to do it with rational powers, though. That's why I'm doing a different example. All right. So um, exactly what I believe um, Kyle was talking about was, well, if so for instance, let me, let me get into this. If you have the square root of x equals 4, and you want to solve for x, right? Well, then you need to, how do you undo taking the square root? You do what? Square, square both sides, right? That's kind of like. You guys hopefully understand that. But what if I had the fourth root of x to the third power? Well, now, yeah, you're going to square both sides, right? But once you square both sides, then you have to take the cube root of both sides, right? Do you guys kind of see that? Watch. If you take the square root of both sides, then you have x to the third, x to the third power equals 16. Then you have to take the cube root of both sides, right? Huh? Why would you to go undo the square root, oh. right? I got to undo the square root first. Then I got to undo the cube root. Well, in the same thing, guys. If you have instead of rewrite, instead of keeping your answer, the re reason why I um, erased it, Sarah, you could do all that work again if you want to. But in my preference, you can also just use. Um, we can use our uh, rational powers. So if I want to get this to be 1, the power of this to be 1, I need to raise this to its reciprocal power. Yes, no. Maybe so. Huh? What happens when you raise a number to it? What happens when you raise an exponent to another power? What do you do with the powers? Multiply them. What's 2 thirds times 3 halves? Huh? 1. So therefore, you have x plus 1 to the first power is equal to the square root of 4 cubed. Right? Um, nope, the index, yep. So now, the next thing, this is where it kind of gets a little bit confusing. You guys need to remember. In 6 1, do you guys remember I told you whenever you take the even root and your answer turns out to be odd, it turns out to be an odd power? Whoa. When you ever take the even root and it turns out to be an odd power, what do you have to do with the answer? You have to use the absolute value. So therefore, this turns into x plus absolute value of x plus 1 equals 4. Because remember, when you're simplifying trigonometric expressions, when you're simplifying them, if you guys remember this, remember like 4, if you had the square root of, um, 
square root of x cubed, right? When you take the square root of an odd power, when you get that answer, you had to use the absolute value because it could have been a positive or in a negative, correct? This answer could have been a positive or negative. This is what we did in 6-1. The same thing. When I take the square root of an odd power and I get my answer to be 4, um, well, actually, let me just double check here. No, it's 8, right? Sorry. 8 to the first power. Yes, what's the question? How to what? I did 4 cubed, which is 64. And I did the square root of 64, which is 8. OK? So just remember, though, when you take the square root and you get your answer to an odd power, just like I did right here. This is in 6-1. Whenever you have the even index and you simplify and you get a, your answer or you get an expression outside the radical to an odd power, you have to put in an absolute value because it could be positive or negative. Or it's, you want it to always be the positive power of it. So in this case, do you guys remember solving absolute value equations? Whenever you had an absolute value equation, you set you have two cases. x plus 1 equals 8 x plus 1 equals negative 8. Huh? Well, now you just go ahead and solve. So x equals um, 7, and x equals negative 9. Is that the right answer? 7 and negative 9. OK. So therefore, now we just go ahead and check our answers again. So you plug in 7. Um, 7, 7 plus 1 is 8. And again, if you guys remember, uh, that's going to be the cube root of 8 squared. 8 squared is 64. The cube root of that is 4. 4 times, eight, four times 3 is 12. 12 equals 12. Negative 9. Negative 9 plus 8 is negative 8. Again, you're squaring and then taking the cube root. Negative 8 squared is 64. Cube root of 64 is 4. Uh, 4 times 3 is 12. So guess what? Both of these answers work. So in this case, we have two answers. Okay. All right. You guys could listen and.